Knee replacement's main indication is pain. So if you're not in pain, then I, I wouldn't perform a knee replacement on you. The other main indication is restoration of function. So typically my patients have pain which wakes them up at night, uh, limits their ability to mobilise and uh, interferes with their quality of life. As mentioned, pain is the main symptom for osteoarthritis of the knee or other arthritis conditions of the knee. Um, the pain typically is related to activity, so when you're mobilising, but also you can have pain which wakes you up at night and that's very disabling. That's typically what tips people over and, and wants to, makes them want to have a knee replacement. The surgery is performed uh, through a midline incision, so through the front of the knee, and typically the implants look something like this. There's a, a metal femoral component, a plastic liner, and a metal tibial component. Um, and these implants have been road tested, similar to a car's engine, if you like, to last as long as possible. Yes, there are complications with the knee replacement, and it's certainly surgery that needs to be entered into with full awareness of the com potential complications. The main complications we worry about with any implant surgery are infection. So getting an infection behind the prosthesis or in the prosthesis, if it creeps behind the prosthesis, can be devastating. And, and occasionally you can actually lose your leg if you have an infection in the knee replacement. So it is something that we're very paranoid about. We take every, make every effort to prevent it. The other main complication we'd worry about is getting a clot in the leg. You will have some blood thinners prescribed to you after surgery to thin your blood slightly um, to prevent the risk of clot. And also when you wake up you typically have compression calf pumps to mechanically prevent the risk of clot as well. But most people do comment on some numbness which is long standing and persistent. Knee replacement surgery is a painful operation. Um, we do use blocks mostly now to make sure that you're, you're comfortable in the immediate post-operative period. But despite this, most people uh, wouldn't be smiling for six weeks after knee replacement surgery, so it is a painful business. You will need to use crutches for at least six weeks after surgery, typically in hospital for three or four days, and sometimes a bit longer if you have bilateral knee replacements. The knee will keep improving for one to two years after knee replacement surgery. Typically driving, uh, so if you're thinking about what your activities will be after surgery, you won't be able to drive typically for six weeks after surgery. I normally say to my patients with knee replacement surgery that there's about a 1 in 20 chance that your knee will be perfect, and that you won't notice it at all. About 18 out of 20 people feel that the knee is better but not perfect, and about 1 in 20 chance that your knee will feel worse than before the operation. So it's certainly something you need to bear in, bear in mind before you enter into a knee replacement surgery. I wouldn't say controversy so much as new technologies. So there, is, uh, there, are other, there are alternatives to knee replacement. Particularly in the younger patients, you might consider a high tibial osteotomy to realign the knee, take the weight off the area that's worn out. And also in some patients, I would recommend just replacing half of the knee. So just doing half a knee replacement or a unicompartmental knee replacement. But the best results um, are with a conventional knee replacement in terms of long-term results and we're talking 10 to 20 to 30 years. The CD scan is used to make a cutting block, so a three-dimensional model of a cutting block, and that's actually used in surgery to make your cuts at the time of surgery. So that's the tibia, for instance, and then this is the femur, and these, these implants are made with a 3D uh, printer, and you can see the initial cuts are therefore made very accurately with the use of CT scanner. So that's, that reduces what we call the outliers in terms of the alignment of the knee, which does seem sensible in terms of producing better long-term results. The use of stem cells is rather a hot topic, doesn't seem to go away. The government uh, Medicare rebate for stem cells use in, in the knee has been withdrawn because of the lack of clinical results to support it. Uh, I'm a bit of a skeptic about stem cells in the knee, I must say, because it is a, a hard-working joint. You are putting stem cells into an articulation that is like a mortar and a pestle. Stem cells in, the, in cartilage don't have great blood supply and I would only reserve it for people who are very young where there's absolutely no alternative. Yes, yeah, certainly in the future it, it will become more of an issue, more of a potential uh, use and probably as an augment for, for things like if we, for instance, realign the knee, the high tibial osteotomy type surgery, then it'll, be, it'll, it'll come into play in the next 10 to 20 years, I'm sure. So in terms of how to make your knee last, your natural knee last, which is always the preference, or should be the preference for patients, hopefully, weight is the big issue. So weight loss is the key issue. In terms of how long can I keep going with a knee that's starting to wear out, 
Uh, activity modification, a sensible physiotherapy program has definitely been shown to be of some assistance. So strengthening the remaining muscles around the knee is of some benefit. Anti-inflammatory use, uh, if you can tolerate it, is certainly ef uh, efficient. And a targeted injection of steroids into the knee is also uh, sometimes useful, but normally a short-term short -term gain.